Welcome to the next lecture in our course additive manufacturing. We will see the involvement of CAD in additive manufacturing. When we talked about additive manufacturing, we said in the introductory lectures, we said that it is used to reduce the product life cycle time. So, when you say it is used to reduce the product life cycle time, apart from empathy study, definition, ideation, prototyping is also one study where we spend lot of time. In order to reduce it, people started using rapid prototyping. For rapid prototyping, the initial point is to make CAD. So, in this lecture, we will see CAD for additive manufacturing. We will be covering the following topics, printing process, then various CAD file formats, CAD CAM softwares, modeling and data processing, issues which are related to STL file format, AFM file format, slicing, design consideration and machine setup. We will try to cover all these topics in brief, so that end of the lecture you get to know what is the importance of CAD and how CAD is used in additive manufacturing. If we look at the printing process, it goes like this. So, the first one is the designing phase. So, designing phase is where you try to visualize an idea, convert your idea, 2D idea into a 3D idea and whatever you had a 3D idea, try to draw that idea on a screen and where in which you try to develop a 3D model which is water tight underline the word water tight because whatever is the CAD information you give at the design stage that will be further processed and you will try to make the additive manufacturing process. So, design is a place where in which you convert 2D into a 3D airtight model. Whatever you have done in 2D on into 3D model, now that CAD you use it for simulation. You can do a stress simulation, you can do a temperature simulation, you can do pressure or whatever or air flow simulation. So, you try to do any one of the simulation and try to do optimization at the simulation stage, try to reduce the amount of material, then transfer this file into additive file creation. Why am I saying additive file creation means? Because you have created a CAD model. Now, that CAD model is optimized. The next step to that optimization is CAD file creation from there you are going to send it to additive manufacturing process. So, now converting a virtual data into a realistic data has to happen. So, now at this stage you try to convert whatever is your CAD model into machine understandable manner. So, here you convert the file, the CAD file into layer by layer by layer file. This layer by layer by layer information will be taken by the machine and it will try to develop. So, in the third stage you are trying to create layer information. Layer information, one layer information will have a boundary and inside a boundary you will have hatches. You will have hatches. Now, you will have to fill up all these information. So, here you will try to have your layer and then inside a layer what all has to be done hatch patterns all these things are created in additive file creation. There is always error which can happen at this stage whatever is the error happening at this stage will get amplified in the further 
stages. So, this is a very, very critical operation. This operation, whatever you get here, it converts a CAD into machine understandable figures. So, now from here, you will try to fed into the machine wherein which you will try to give process parameters. Today, you have simulation softwares which can convert layer information into a process parameter, into process parameter. Say for example, the movement of the nozzle feed rate, the wire feed rate, the powder feed rate. So, all these things are process parameters which also are getting created automatically at this additive file creation stage and then it is pushed into additive manufacturing process stage. This is the fourth stage. Whatever you create as an additive file here, that file is now printed into layer by layer information and then it is accumulated. So, again here whatever was the curved surface is now converted into straight line surfaces. So, that means to say you will have facets. Now, these facets are going to be with some approximation to the curved surface. So, here you will have some amount of small error and you might have to do some finishing to make the product customer worthy. So, here what we do? We take the product and then we do secondary processing or post processing on the additive manufactured part. So, here we try to smoothen the surface, try to remove the, the supporting structure, try to give a coating for it, try to add color for it and try sometimes even to unheal the sample such that it is getting stress relieved. So, those things are called as finishing process. After the finishing process, the sample will be sent for validation. So, whatever you have made, is it according to the dimensions whatever you wanted and does it have any defect? So, here we try to use optical non-contact techniques to measure the feature dimensions and sometimes we also use CT, micro CT computer tomography to find out internally is there any voids. So, this will be the sixth stage. So, this entire thing is called as printing process. In the printing process, the steps involved are design, simulation, additive file creation, additive process, then finishing, finally it is measure and validate. Moment it is done, then finally what you get is a finished part. So, all these steps have to be done when you try to use any metal additive manufacturing machine or process. If it is plastic, ceramic or metal, the process is going to be the same. So, CAD file format. In additive manufacturing, the part to be manufactured is designed by a CAD tool, computer aided design that contains all the printing information. All AM processes begin with the CAD conceptualization and model conversion into a machine readable file. Conceptualization, model conversion, concept to model and model to machine readable file. After sending the file to the machine, the part is printed. What is machine readable file? These machine readable files are nothing but neutral files, machine readable files. They are nothing but neutral files. These neutral files are used to convert CAD model into machine readable file. After sending the file to the machine, the part is printed. An experienced designer can create CAD file via user interface, 3D scanning and 3D scanning an existing part or both. So, what is this 3D scanning is? 3D scanning here is part of reverse engineering. In reverse engineering, we have an existing part. We try to create information with the existing part by a scanning technique. If you look at it, 
rather than validate if you use it only for measurement using light or using x-ray for measuring the dimension of the part is nothing but reverse engineering. So, that is what is talked here. So, 3D scanning an existing part or you can have a combination of these two. The CAD files used in additive manufacturing are sliced and stacked to form the desired part. SAT, DXF, STP and STL are most commonly used 3D CAD model formats. So, from the CAD we try to convert it into testellations. Testellations are nothing but star dot STL. So, star dot STL files are called as neutral files. CAD model used in AM are sliced and stacked to form a desired part. So, these are all the different file formats which are available. STL which is very commonly used is nothing stands for stereolithography is the most common AM format. This file format specifies ASCII or binary representation of 2D and 3D object surface geometry. The only thing which is missing in STL is it will not have any color or texture details. So, today we look forward for other neutral files, higher end neutral files which will try to convert CAD into machine readable format. So, this will always be star dot STL. Okay. But this is very important point, this will not have color information and texture information. The STL file containing triangle face sits identified by a unit normal and using a three dimensional Cartesian coordinate system is done. So, what we are trying to say is we try to convert the surface curved surface into triangles and a normal. So, each vertex will have coordinate points. So, this will have x comma y comma z data, x comma y comma z and this will also be x comma y comma z data. So, it is x 1, x 2, x 3, y 1, y 2, y 3, y 3 right and z 1, z 2, z 3 and then they have a normal. Okay. This is what the STL file contains a face, a triangle facet which is the most simplest facet and easy to represent and com compute. So, triangle face it identified by a unit normal, this is a unit normal with 3 vertices using 3 dimensional Cartesian coordinate system. Two non-standard variations of the binary STL file can be used to include color information, two non-standard variations of the binary STL file can give you a color information. As geometry changes, the triangle face it density changes as geometry changes that means to say if you have a curved object then the number of triangles whatever it is the density will be very large. As the geometry changes triangle face density changes. STL file cannot represent color, texture, material and other print object properties. Today we are using this standard which is known as advanced manufacturing file format. AFM and it is an XML based format. This tries to give all the other details like texture, color, material, etcetera, etcetera. Any CAD CAM software to, do, to describe the geometry, composition, color, material and the lattices of any object to be fabricated with AM technologies can be used to create additive manufacturing file formats. This is a typical CAD drawing in that CAD drawing you have converted into STL files. You can see here these the, the object is converted into several small facets and these facets are linked. So, each facet finally, if you look in detail it will be like this. We will have three vertices and a normal. Okay. So, this is a STL file when you store the file as star dot STL star dot AMF then you will get all these information for STL files. So, what are all the softwares which are there? The CAD CAM softwares, there are many AM software solutions available today. The software can be categorized by purpose. Software is used for 3D printing, scanning, improving part performance and process simulation. Power mill, NX CAM and CAM manufacturer, master CAM are generally used as CAD CAM software for additive manufacturing. Power mill CAM solution program 
programs the tool path for 3 and 5 axis CNC machines, produce a smooth surface finishes and simulates path tool path. The same thing you can use here. Siemens NX Cam is a high end CAD CAM K engineering analysis software which also has manufacturing solutions to it. Robotic software is also in plenty. Today what has happened all these softwares which was initially used for machining are getting converted uh, for additive manufacturing or they are trying to have add on modules for additive manufacturing. Power mill introduced power mill additive. It is a plug in for DED driven additive or a hybrid manufacturing. It uses power mill multi axis CNC and a robo capabilities to create additive tool path with detailed process parameter control. So, when the tool path means when the nozzle goes around in hitting the laser on the powder bed. So, you will see some patterns are getting created. So, those things are called as additive tool path. These process parameters enable us or you to finally, control the operation of deposition at the tool path point level. So, it is like this the laser will move and it will try to create all along the path. Despite packages additive manufacturing software hierarchies have major flaws. Lack of intelligence and the process based recipe is even now a problem. This is something which you should know. Please do not think whatever software or simulation you do, it tries to give you ready made information, still it lacks intelligence. So, today that is what people are started using machine learning and deep learning in additive manufacturing, people are started using it. Process based recipes, I use titanium powder, if I use aluminum powder, what happens to the process parameter? That is what is called as process based recipes is a problem. Modeling for uh, printed parts, you will have 3D CAD model. You can also extract it from point cloud data. This point cloud data comes from the reverse engineering, where in which you use a laser and you try to scan the details. So, that is point cloud data. So, that is given to an STL model. So, you try to add to this model geometric information and topological information. These information, geometrical information means dimensions, topological means on the surface roughness and other things. So, you try to add these things to STL file. Then what you do is we put functional requirement and design requirement. Then what we do, we try to do refinement and optimization of mesh and face it because STL file, so it will have a lot of facets. So, now what we do is we try to look at material feature database and that gives material information. Again geometric information, topological information, this is fed into colored HEO model, heterogeneous model for printing. So, this is how the modeling of a printed part happens. You will have STL file, you will have refinement and optimization of mesh and then you will also have colored HEO model, heterogeneous object model. When you look into the data processing in AM systems, you will have from the model subsystem, you will try to have model orientation, then support generation, then you will have model slicing, then process parameter design, process file generation process simulation and then you try to get the final part to control and mechanical. So, here what does it mean is when you want to develop any part, for example, I wanted to develop my hand. So, should I keep my hand like this and print or should I keep my hand like this and print? The object should it be oriented vertical or horizontal? When I do it vertical, you will have more layers. When I do horizontal, you will have less layers. When I do a vertical, you have to support my hand because it is a free hanging structure. When you do horizontal, you do not have to support so much. So, now what does it happen is you try to decide which orientation I should keep the path such that I try to get the best roughness and best strength. So, model orientation this is first thing. Next is for this developed model, if I wanted to have a supporting structure so that the free hanging uh, projections does not sag down. So, I would like to support them. So, support generation is the next step. The third step will be for the support developed model, how am I going to create layers? So, layers the modeling of layers, how am I going to slice them? Is it going to be as thin as possible or is it going to be as, as heavy? That means to say as thick as possible. When I wanted to have lot of micro feature details, I go for very small slicing thickness. When I wanted to have a slightly larger, I go for thicker slice. 
So, something called as adaptive slicing methods are today talked about adapt, adaptive slicing methods. So, here what does it mean is wherever there is a complex feature, wherever there is a change in geometry more than a x value in the uh, CAD model, it will try to automatically slice to have a thicker or a thinner thing. So, that is model slicing. From the model slicing, it is only one layer you have sliced. Now, in that layer, how are we going to fill up detail? So, that is called as process parameter design, then process file generation. After you do the process generation, then you have a process file which tries to do switch on switch off and then you try to do a simulation. So, these are the steps which are involved in data processing in additive manufacturing. So, the steps which are involved as I was telling you the second step is testillation. So, testillation in CAD. So, this is a cup which is drawn in CAD, but now after that you wanted to convert this information into adaptive machine control file or adaptive machining process file or something like that. Uh, so, there what you do is you try to convert this CAD model into testillations. When I talk about testillations, I try to convert this information into triangles. When the triangle size is large, the surface roughness is very high. When the triangle surface is small, then you will try to have a smoother surface as compared to this. The interesting part when you compare these two, this will try to have more information and as compared to that of this. So, here you will have more triangles, more triangles, good surface finish, good product control you will have with a smaller tessellation triangles as compared to that of larger. So, this shows large tessellation files. These are small, I am talking about triangle size STL file with respect to all triangles. But if you try to see the volume, this will be the large as compared to that of this. Some issues in the with the STL file, though it might look very easy, you have a curved surface and you will trying to create facets. It is very easy when you start looking at it, but there are small, small, small issues which come that these issues will lead to error in printing. So, let us understand these small issues, so that when you start using this CAD, when you start developing STL, today of course, STL files are auto generated. You can also understand where exactly the mistake is and you can try to correct it. Okay. So, there are generally gaps or missing facets. If you see this is a curved surface, right? this curved surface is divided into several small triangles. You see here, the this is a curved surface, the dark one is a curved surface and you see a triangle here. So, there is a missing information in this place or there is a gap in this place or there are triangles, sharp edges and this information is missing. So, gaps or missing facets is one of the biggest problem when we try to create STL files from the given CAD drawing. During testillation of surfaces, having large curves, gaps or holes can be generated at the intersection of the surfaces. You can have gaps or holes, so intersection. Okay. So, this will try to give a gap there and the system will not know what to do here. Either it will fill with material or it will not even fill with material and go away. This results in error at these intersections which leaves gap and holes along the edges as shown in the figure. So, you see here this is a gap which gets generated when you try to create this as so you see here vertex 1, vertex 2, vertex 3, phase 1, phase 2, phase 2 A, phase 2 B. Okay. Next is you can have degenerated facets. Degenerated facets means during testillation a open space are created due to unequal testillation, open space of two adjacent surface patches along a common mating surface. You will have mating surface, you will have unequal testillation. Stitching of these open space is carried out by STL file correction software resulting in geometric degeneracy. So, degeneracy means having more information. So, you will have A, E, D has one edge. D, okay, D, E and F has one edge. So, these edges are common for this B, A, A, B and F. So, you will see that there are common uh, edges. 
this is the redundancy they it could have taken it as a single triangle now it is taking it as two triangles so the stitching of these open space is carried out by stl file correction there is something called as a stl file correction or there is something called as a patch working so wherever there is a error while running the test after testulation they will run it before layer information generation you will try to figure out there will be a lot of errors these errors are either manually clear, cleared or there is a software which converts all these things and uh, it tries to remove the error when it tries to remove the error it creates lot of degeneracy this is particular when all edges of the face it are collinear but vertices are distinctly shown in the figure they are all collinear and distinctly shown in the figure this is a degenerated face it degenerated face it provide essential topological information indicating mating of two surfaces even though it does not contain valid surface normal this vital information is stored before neglecting the degenerated face it so degenerated face it provides essential topological information so this is a very very valid point there can be other issue of overlapping face it for example the stl file vertices are denoted as floating numbers resulting in a overlap face it so if you see here generally ascii format defines a face it solid name face it ni n to the suffix j k over uh, the outer loop is v1 that is v x y z v2 x v y v2 z and then v3 x y z so end of loop this is how ascii format file looks like for a face it so end of face it and this so when we have a rounding off we denoting a floating number resulting in a overlap of face it or you can try to have overlapping of triangles so there is one face it like this the other triangular face it is like this they try to intersect each other which cannot happen in reality so these are overlapping face it the earlier one was degeneration we saw before that we saw missing gap and now we see overlapping face it all these things are problems or issues which are created while creating stl format there is another interesting thing in cad is manifold geometry so in manifold geometry you have manifold 3d model so this is a manifold 3d model this is a non manifold 3d model so you can have manifold so you split it down and then you have so manifold 3d model is like this so then in ideation on the top place you will have something like this so 2d face associated with a 3d model non manifold 3d model so you cannot have a 3d model where in which you can have one plane as 2d uh, on this so this will try to say a non manifold model so in geometry if you go work there is something called as manifold and na non manifold models non manifold this you can see because in this course we cannot get more deeper into cad so manifold and non manifold models are there and in in when you start working with 3d software cad so you will see this manifold and non manifold so what are non manifold geometries non manifold geometries are geometrical topological terms that allow all disjoining lumps to exist in their own logical body what is non manifold geometry are geometrical topology terms that allow all disjoint lumps to existing in their own logical body it can be simply understood with manufacturability so here all disjoining lumps of the exist to exist in their own logical body these are mainly generated due to rounding of error during the testulation of thin features so you can have a figure like this when you try to develop a figure like this it is very difficult for the point to rest so instead of this if you can rotate it and print it like this then this will try to give a valid object so the basic structure of additive manufacturing file format is going to be object material texture constellation and meta data so object is each file must contain at least one object element to describe the object that will be the uh, object in material define simple or multiple material ids for printing texture define sing single or multiple texture mapping constellation define displacement parameter rotation parameter which are 
collect which are collection of instances. Metadata is simplify additional information about the objects and, and the elements containing in the file. Commonly used CAD file formats in additive manufacturing is developed company is 3D systems. This is STL format, OPJ format is Wavefront Technologies and the PLY format is Stanford Graphic Lab. Description, here we use triangle patches, vertices, color values. When you go to OPJ, we use straight, polygon and freeform surfaces. So, straight line, polygon, surface and freeform curves. When we talk about ply format, vertices, faces, related data and group. A face that supports more than more than three vertices, which will never happen in STL, which will happen in OPG and which will not happen in PLY. The maximum compression ratio of a PNG uh, file is 44.7 times is to 1. Here OPJ is going to be 33.2 to 1 and 87.9 to 1. Why is this very important? Because this will try to talk about how much size can you reduce it such that you, you occupy less space in your CAD software. Topology independency, AFM, the ad additive manufacturing files use XML structure to describe the information of model objects in a general way. It can be not only processed by computer, but also understood by human, XML format structure. The new standard not only records a single material, but also assigns different materials to different parts and can change the proportion to the two materials in state. For example, if you want to mix two materials, you can try to decide in the technology independency, you can do it. It is possible to specify an image to be printed on a surface of the model and it is also possible to specify most effective print path for 3D printing. Raw data such as author's name, model name, etc., can also be recorded in the technology independency. Additive manufacturing file format has to be simple or the simplicity matters very much. For ease of understanding an application, the file format should be able to read and edit in a simple text viewer and the same information should not be stored in multiple places in the file. So, the additive manufacturing file format should be as simple as possible. It should simple text viewer information should not be stored in multiple places in a single file. It should be extendable. That means to say you have made an object just by adding some module, you will be able to make a larger one. So, as the complexity and the size of the component increases, it can be expanded with the increasing resolution and accuracy of the manufacturing equipment, including large array capable of handling the same object, complex repetitive internal features, a smooth surface with fine print resolution and many components for printing that are placed in the ideal fill material package. So, extendability is also very important. One is simplicity, two is extendable. Today in manufacturing, we always look for this extendability. Third is high performance. It allocates reasonable duration for reading and writing and use reasonable file size for typically large volume objects. So, try to have a large object in a small space, that is what is high performance. Strong compatibility, AFM format is not only backward compatible but also compatible with the existing STL and PLY file format and can be adopted to further development needs to achieve forward complexity. When we look into the comparison of 3D model file formats, these are different file formats STL, OPJ, PLY, AFM and 3MF. So, it is STL object, PLY, a advanced manufacturing uh, format or additive manufacturing format, 3D manufacturing format. So, here description is triangular patches, here it is straight line, polygon surface, freeform surface, PLY fixed points, face it, related data groups, AFM is geometric information, color, material, author information, etcetera can be expanded, 3MF is geometric information, color, material, texture, etcetera. Whether it contains color or not, STL no, OBJ no, PLY yes, AFM yes and 3M, 3MF, yes. So, this color information is very important when you are trying to build a, a three dimensional topological dominated information, for example, hilly terrain. Whether it contains material information, STL, no, 
object no, PLY no, AMF yes, 3MF yes. They have object, uh, they have material information also. Companies which they follow, 3D systems follows is, OPJ is Wavefront, PLY is Stanford, AMF is ASTM community follows advanced or sorry, additive manufacturing format and 3D manufacturing is 3MF. Now, let us move from STL, let us move into slicing, model slicing. The process of geometric data for additive manufacturing mainly composes of two stages. One is slicing the information into layer for path generation. Next one is creating process specific rastering pattern for each layer. These two are very important when we are trying to do slicing. Slicing, you will have these two. Till now, whatever we studied about STL, everything is done. So, STL means it is face it information converting from CAD to machine readable face it format. So, it can be triangle, it can be straight line, it can be fixed point, it can be geometric information, it can be geometric information color. There are a number of slicing methodologies that are being used for various software. This can be basically classified into two generic methodology, uniform life, adaptive slicing. So, number of slicing methodology we are discussing two important one. So, uniform life and adaptive. So, this is the input one, this is uniform slicing. So, here whatever might be the curve change, I try to slice it in a very uniform manner. So, you get a uniform slice, but when we try to do adaptive slicing, wherever there is a change in geometry more than a particular slope, slope change, we try to slice it. We try to fix that slope angle and if it crosses that slope angle immediately a slice is drawn. So, this is called as adaptive slicing. So, input model uniform slicing and adaptive slicing. There are two types of slicing which we saw uniform life and adaptive slicing. Okay. So, this is also very important. When we try to slice the information in one layer, first is outer geometry, next is from inside the outer geometry what all are you going to fill in. So, design considerations in AM. The common issues always which comes when we use additive manufacturing is feature resolution. How accurate you try to develop a feature matter. The feature resolution is very important when we decide which process to use. When we use powder bed fusion or when we use DED or when we use extrusion, metal extrusion, we always look for which one gives a better size, better shape, accuracy and what is the smallest feature size it can do, that is feature resolution. Next one is roughness. Surface roughness is because here when we talk about metals, it is more always like selective sintering or it will be selective melting, selective sintering or selective melting. When we try to sinter or when we try to melt, it is basically the metal powders are going to join with each other and once it joins, it makes a surface very rough. So, how to get a better surface? Because after doing additive manufacturing process, as far as metal is concerned, finishing is a very big challenge. The last one is geometrical accuracy. We are trying to talk about not dimensional accuracy, geometrical accuracy, where in which we involve 3D geometry and we also look for uh, cylindricity, conicity, run out, all these things we try to look at while developing that. So, geometrical accuracy is the other important thing. The most important problem which we face as far as additive manufacturing when we do layer by layer is the staircase effect. Staircase of this is a vertical feature, this is an angular feature, this is an angular feature. So, same thing you are, so now if you see this is called as a staircase effect. What you wanted was a curved surface, but what you got generated is a staircase effect. So, this is for an angled feature. If you want a vertical feature, it is very easy. When you have at a slightly at an angle, then you get this staircase effect. So, you have angular feature material extrusion, you have angular feature material stereolithography, you have angular feature bed fusion powder. So, anywhere and everywhere you will always have a staircase effect. This depends or dictates the feature resolution which was talked here. How do we calculate the minimum stair stepping error model? We are trying to calculate the staircase effect. So, staircase consider a planar volume, the stair 
stepping volume is the sum of each stair, each stair steps, V step, which is a function of surface area and inclination that surface makes with the build plane. So, this is the staircase and here if you want to find out the thickness, it is L cos theta and N is a point normal and theta is along the line, this angle becomes theta. So, then inclined surface, these are inclined surfaces. So, L cos theta, the step is nothing but A i into L cos theta divided by 2, where A i, L and theta are planar surface area, layer thickness and the angle between the normal and the planar. So, the built direction vector respectively. So, this is a very important formula you have to know. You can calculate step is equal to a i l cos theta divided by 2, l is the, the layer thickness and a i is the surface area. So, by this, so if you want to reduce the staircase effect, you reduce the step size. So, you see here l, l is nothing but the layer thickness, it has a direct influence. If only one feature is present in the component, it is a perfect to have theta equal to 0. If more number of features are present in the designers, it is the designers responsibility to select between the features and decide the optimum orientation. This staircase effect is, is inborn. If you want to reduce the staircase effect, what we do is we try to orient the object in such a way such that the theta is reduced. So, we try to know. So, this is where you see we started initially with orientation of the object. So, layer height simplest parameter to influence printed parameters. So, the simplest parameter to influence the printed parameters, first we have to see this is an ideal sphere. If the sphere sliced at 0.8 millimeter thickness, you will get this. If a sphere 0.25, you will get this. Okay. So, when we decrease uh, with a decrease in height, finer details with higher accuracy and surface finish can be obtained 0.25. When the thickness is high, you will have a rough surface. Surface is lost, accuracy is also lost. So, layer thickness plays a very important role as far as the influence of printing. So, there is always residual stress which is getting imbibed in the part while printing through additive manufacturing, especially polymer as well as metal is concerned. So, what we do is we always have a hot layer. So, there is a hot layer we keep and then uh, we also try to have cold layer. So, we try to have a hot layer, cold layer. So, here the thermal stresses resist by the built plate, no contraction will happen. So, this is cold is contraction, this is expansion, so you get a very good surface. So, explain layer placed on stressed expanded layer. So, you can see this and you can also have additional layer add more stresses, but it is uniformly distributed, no warping happens when you have this cold layer. So, that means to say you after you do one layer, you give some time so that the layer gets solidified. So, these are the places where residual stresses can be created. This is tensile, this is compressive. Between these two, there will always be a huge stress variation. So, there will be a demarcation here. Residual stresses in additive manufacturing, especially in metal additive manufacturing is a very dominant quality issue creator. When we try to heat a surface using a laser, you can see there is lot of uh, thermal stresses are created and these are tensile stresses. When we cool it, then this gets shrunk and it tries to introduce a compressive stress. Just by controlling the in situ surface temperature of the material that is laser, ad adding and cooling and the super and the periphery. Say for example, you have an object which is done and I put it inside a container and in that container I try to heat it. So, then the difference will not be very high. So, the tensile stresses will not be created very high. So, when we try to design additive manufacturing, the, some of the challenges are shrinkage and warping. Uh, they both are associated with temperature. So, we would like to look at temperature, curing and mitigating shrinkage and warping. Temperature, thermal stresses and residual stresses causes shrinkage and warping, which is a very common feature. So, when we try to decide the layer thickness, you try to have enough layer such that the shrinkage and warpage does not happen in one go. Curving, as the layer of a photopolymer is cured, sorry, 
curing, curing as the layer of the photopolymer is cured, there is a shrinkage which happens, which is also true when we start doing melting, selective laser melting, there is a curing and there is a shrinkage process which is attached. Mitigating shrinkage and warping, printing in a temperature controlled build environment, avoiding large surface uh, flat surfaces and providing supports will try to reduce the shrinkage and warping. Very large surface, say for example, my hand, it is a very large surface, if I do it, it is very small. So, I can try to reduce the warping, right. And the build the environment, the complete object where it is getting built can be sealed in a container and the temperature can be maintained or the bed can be maintained with a temperature. You can always try to give filleting. So, filleting means sharp edges, we try to avoid. So, rather than sharp edges, we try to give corner very smooth and then we try to do something like this. So, filleting is uh, helps to reduce the stress concentration at corners or the edges. It also helps in assisting the removal of parts from the built platform. So, trying to produce filleting and supports should be introduced in 3D design for printing parts whatever possible. Most technological produces natural fillet on edges and corners. Support structure which is always given to support the overhanging support structure, need for support structure as each layer requires a build platform. Most support structure have a negative effect on printed part, once it is supported it does not. Some processes offer disallowable support while some process does not require support at all. So, we will always look for whether there is a need for support structure, whether there is a need for fillet and then we start doing it. So, this is a typical fillet which is given. So, fillet compared with the chamfer at the edge in contact with the built plate, this is a built plate fillet. So, here the support generation for your bolt to be printed. So, these are all supports because bolt if you do it like this, then the bottom surface you will never get it. So, you do it at an angle. So, these support structures will be dissolved and then you get a, a bolt. So, now we have been looking into all these the important things which is design consideration, feature resolution, surface finish, geometric accuracy. These are very, very important. For this, there will be a staircase effect, there will be uh, I saw how do you calculate the step size, then the layer height, then we talked about thermal, uh, thermal uh, induced stresses, then we ta talked about uh, curing and the mitigating shrinkage and curing, um, filleting and supporting. These are some of the design considerations which you have to do when we try to do additive manufactured parts. Some of the commercially available softwares for simulation while doing the RP is Digimat, RP Photonic, Additive Lab, Procast, Arena, Auto Mode and Sim Process. These are all some of the softwares where you can do simulation and try to see the part, how is it getting printed. The steps for building file preparation, check the geometric input as per the standard file format. Check for file error and rectify the error if there is any. Check for the part orientation consideration, build time, support requirements, staircase stepping error, etcetera. This is very, very important in your uh, course. Addition of support structure in automatic and semi-automatic mode by providing the support type, criteria for support generation, type of support, etcetera as input. Nesting of the same or multiple components as per the requirement. Nesting of the same means nesting means trying to build more components in one shot. Slicing the part and support geometry by providing layer thickness as input, we saw the effect of layer thickness height. Generation of tool path and selection of scanning strategies. Input the process parameters specific to the process. Generally, separate process parameters are provided for support structures to allow easy removal. So, input the process parameters specific to the process. Last, rapidly review the geometry and the laser tool path slice by slice. When it goes to the machine setup, the quality of the additive manufactured product also depends on various process parameters and not on part pre-process preparation. These parameters are machine, material, application specific and their due consideration is required to achieve the results. The machine setup primarily includes build plate preparation, feed stock preparation, build environment preparation, plate 
and then next is feedstock, feedstock is the powder here, then build development, environmental is the jacket whatever is built around the platform. So, this is build plates preparation, so this is the build plate. When we do DED, build place is important. Even when you do material extrusion, this is very important. It is the base of the fabricating the component and the preparation of the build plate is important to obtain high quality components. Some important considerations are selection of build plate material, preparation of build plate and leveling of this is very, very important. Recently, we, we missed out this leveling and we lost lot of money because we did not level the bed before doing the SLS process. So, preparation of the build plate and selection of the build plate all are very important. Then feedstock preparation, many feedstock materials tend to absorb moisture, so we have to be careful even the metal powder can absorb moisture. During handling inappropriate storing and manual sieving, recycling moisture, they are chances to pick up the moisture. So, they all ha can happen and once the moisture is picked up, when we do SLS or SLM process there is a problem of generating porosity. These moisture picked up can result in poor oxidation formation in the additive manufacturing build components. The moisture can affect the fluidity of the powder. So, the flowing of the powder through the nozzle that can be or before it is getting used by a recoater blade, the fluid the moisture can affect the fluidity of the powder and yield agglomeration and non-uniform spreading during the additive manufacturing preheating of powder is required to remove the moisture. So, these are all feed stock preparation which is to be done before the process. Build environment, the component is generally a, a built in controlled atmosphere to prevent oxidation of the melt pool. Argon is generally used for highly sensitive material like aluminum and titanium while nitrogen is used for processing of other metals and alloys. In case of polymer based additive manufacturing, melting environment provides uniform temperature to the built component during the process. So, built environment is also very important. Three important steps in machining setup. Machining setup is build plate preparation, feedstock preparation and build environmental preparation. So, this is the machine setup. You can have a wire which comes here, you can have a shielded gas this is for wire DED, you can have powder, so you will have argon wherein which they maintain the working chamber temperature and pressure such that the oxidation does not happen. So, now to the end of this lecture points to ponder, what are the different types of file formats did we use in AM? We used STL, OBJ, PLY, AMF, 3, 3 uh, MF. Right. So, what are all the different errors which are associated? So, errors are associated while creating tessellations. So, you can have degeneracy, missing file, all these things, overlapping, right? slicing and design consideration for modeling. So, design consideration, we saw so many design considerations. Next, steps for final preparation of printing, we saw three steps and the last one is machine setup. We have clearly understood how do we convert a CAD file into a machine readable file and what are all the issues which come while conversion and after it is converted when you start processing what are all the difficulties you place and how will you remove those difficulties by doing post processing and by valid inspection. The assignments are two, again it need not be submitted, make a flowchart for preparing CAD file for printing. Think and list some of the errors that can occur while machining setup is not done properly. I said one is leveling error. So, like that you should sit down and list down all the things possible from the understanding of this course. Thank you so much.